Hi everyone, today I have a quick showcase for my latest addition to Brushify. Brushify is an Unreal Engine toolkit that I'm developing that helps you build Unreal Engine environments faster. So this pack here focuses on cliff pieces. So these assets are extremely useful and can be used in lots of different ways. So I'm going to show you one of these larger cliff piece assets here and just pull this out of the, the terrain there. And you can see that this is actually one very large modular piece. Uh, it's got some rocks on top and those are all, you know, quite high resolution textures. So if you want, you can run the player around on top of those. And of course you can, with the procedural tools, scatter objects on the tops of these. Uh, so they're really good for that. And then the sides, you can see are all very, very detailed and, f and based off of photogrammetry. So all of the sides and edges are all actual real world photogrammetry, real world scans of an actual cliff. And so uh, these are basically compiled together and enclosed. It's kind of a, it's a bit of a difficult process, but uh, it's really worth it because it means you get an asset in the end that's, uh, that's super modular. And so these are, you know, I've not really seen too many assets on the Unreal Marketplace or pretty much any stores that are sort of game ready and, uh, you know, ready to be sort of slotted into the terrain like this in this incredibly versatile way so if I if I demonstrate this now you know for instance if I see there's a sort of yeah okay there's a quite nice looking bit of terrain here but it would be even better if I would have some vertical cliff wall so that I can kind of fill that in you know you can scale it down you can scale it up you can rotate it translate it and I'm just going to use that to create some sort of vertical cliff wall and uh, maybe I'll duplicate it again rotate it around and uh, let's put another one here maybe even have it quite large. And then yeah, I'm now immediately ready to jump into the game. And let's play that little bit of a section there. So you can see that these now look like two really detailed cliffs uh, that I've just put down onto the terrain there. And you can walk on top of those. So they're pretty, pretty easy to slot into different places and yeah as you can see just because it's photogrammetry the the scale and scope of it really holds up nicely and you you get that realistic feel when you run past it so up close uh, i've already yeah so up close i've already planned for this uh, contingency that players of course get really really close and so i've got some sort of a detail texture that fades in when the player gets really really close to the rocks and, uh, and that's really useful to, you know, to have something like that uh, to make sure that you don't get this sort of blurry mess. Um, so these come with 8K textures, uh, but of course, you know, you can reduce those down to something like 1K if you're working on mobile. And uh, that's not too much of a, uh, a, a sort of visual quality difference. So I'm going to show you guys how that looks, actually, if you just take the... Um, if you take this material and uh, reduce the quality down a little bit. So I'm going to go into my texture here. I've got a texture here called Texture Hu Cliff Huge, that's the name of it. And uh, I'm going to turn the, let's turn the resolution from 4K uh, down to uh, something like 1K. So that's now 1K. Still holds up pretty nicely. And of course you get closer and the detail uh, texture fades in anyway. So if you're just using 1K textures and you want that for mobile, I don't think you're gonna lose too much quality. Uh, and you know, if you really want to do high-end stuff uh, pre-rendered, -pre uh, you can unlock in Unreal Engine the 8K setting and uh, go up to 8K. But I've never really found that necessary, to be honest. So I've got this large cliff model here. Uh, I've also got packaged in this map um, a sort of large, uh, slight, slightly smaller cliff variation. This is nice. It's got some sort of um, platforms built onto there. And yeah, this is more for like the kind of o small overhangs. So yeah, this one also works as something you can just run along and maybe you want to make that bigger or smaller. It's again got um, 
detail textures. So if you get close to the asset, it's it's all gonna hold up nicely. Even if in a, in a third person or third person, uh, first person or third person game. And um, yeah, those are really useful too. So I've got the, the really huge ones, slightly smaller ones. Uh, what else have I got? I've got ones that are shaped like this, which are sort of like peaks of the mountains. So I use these usually more in the distance as a sort of cap, uh, cap to the mountain tops. So, you know, if you're going up a, a little path like this, you might want to pepper a few of these, you know, up along the sides of the path, just to make that kind of cool, rocky, rocky feeling. So I think these are really useful shapes to, to use here. So I'm just gonna just gonna run along that path now and see how that looks. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, you know, again, you can, you can just walk along these and admire the view, check out how the how the rest of the landscape looks from your newfound vantage point. So yeah, so those are sort of the bigger mountain pieces. Uh, I'm just going to delete these and let's see what else is in the little folder here. So I've got a, a, uh, one of these uh, quite detailed uh, photo scanned rocks, which I think are also very useful. You know, you can just stuck those into the uh, into the terrain there, and uh, you know they're really good for just sort of peppering the environment with them, uh, or or just adding a slightly bigger, more realistic looking piece to the terrain just adds a slight variation to it so you know you can see how all three of these or you know all, all three or four of these assets together combined can create some really interesting looking landscapes with nice shapes um, so yeah that's that nice rock uh, what else have I got I've got a, a few of these sort of scatter rock pieces so I've got something that's like a slab shaped piece like this one and then there's uh, one that's more like a kind of, I guess, more spherical, kind of typical looking rock. And um, last but not least, I have got a slightly bigger rock as well, which is this kind of shape. It's just more like a, somewhere in between a cliff and a rock. So yeah, you've got lots of, you know, lots of different ways you can use these. So yeah, these ones I use for sort of dynamic scattering across the terrain. And the way that that works is with the procedural foliage spawning system. So I actually use that to spawn the rocks on the terrain. So if I select all the foliage here, you can see that these are all of the foliage actors in the level. So all of these rocks aren't placed by hand. These were all nicely placed by the procedural foliage spawning system, uh, which is really great because I don't like to place uh, a million rocks all by hand. Uh, I've just got better things to do, you know. <laughs> so, I, I, as I think most of us have, we have most of us have better things to do. So, yeah, I like to I like to do all that stuff procedurally. Uh, so if I so I'm just going to show how that works. If I delete all the rocks, uh, all the all the foliage, and I select the um, procedural foliage volume here, and just scroll down here on the on the left, and I'm just going to hit re-simulate. Bam! And there we have it. All of those rocks just got re-simulated all over the entire terrain. Let's just show how that looks. Yeah, cool. And now I've got all of this extra detail going on in the level. And of course you can control the amount of rocks and the, the sort of size and scale of them. All of those are settings in the procedural foliage um, set uh, the foliage type settings, uh, and that's all included uh, in the pack. So I'm going to quickly show you how that works. If you go into uh, the procedural foliage volume, go into foliage types, see these two files, edit those. You've got all the procedural settings right here in the list, and you can tweak those. So I'll definitely be doing a video on how to uh, use those procedural settings uh, sometime in the future, but I'm gonna wait until I got one of my foliage packs complete uh, before I really dip into that. 
uh, because I want to have something that's a sort of cool showcase um, of that. So one more thing to talk about is the background here. So the background is actually made up of lots of uh, separate background meshes. Uh, these are of course the uh, Brushify meshes that come with every Brushify pack. So with each Brushify pack it will come with usually four uh, background meshes for you to use in the distance. So yeah, as you can see these are nicely detailed and uh, the texturing actually completely matches uh, the texturing of the auto material terrain. So the big thing about Brushify packs is that what I'm trying to do with this product is not just create these sort of ready-made environments, but I also want to make sure that those environments are ready to be assembled, reconfigured, and, uh, and sort of modified in a very modular way, which is why sort of everything in this environment, it's nothing is baked, nothing is, uh, you know, nothing is sort of created from just World Machine and then and then static, you know, that you can't modify. So everything can be modified very easily. So all of these are just meshes that you can pull out and they're actually usually using all the same asset. And um, I've just got these very versatile assets and that's great because it's, it's less texture memory uh, to be loaded. So if you're making a game on mobile or on consoles or for VR, um, it's just way, way better on performance side. Uh, another thing that's really useful is I have a completely modifiable landscape shader, um, which I also did another video about. It's called the multi-biome shader video. Uh, so if you want more details about how this works, it's right there in that video. Uh, but yeah, this is a great shader because it lets you sort of paint down uh, different biomes and it lets you, of course, modify the terrain uh, right then and there in real time in the engine without having to uh, do anything custom in World Machine. And of course with my uh, Brushify uh, alpha, alpha brushes I can add these kind of crazy details uh, very very quickly. So I'm just gonna slap a nice erosion area onto the terrain here and we'll see how that looks. So yeah, you can see that I can very quickly and easily get some nice results there. Let's maybe try an even bigger setting. Bam. So that's if you want to create like a huge area. Of course you can make the, the brush even smaller if you just want to make a smaller mountain but you know the great thing is once you once you do that you can once you get the hang of how this works you can start building you know whole valleys whole sections of terrain in different ways and really start using the, the sculpting brushes in in interesting ways to create nice landscapes and different variations you know all with this real world erosion effects with these real world erosion effects that are sort of built in to the brushes those are built into the brushes uh, from the real world, from real world data, real world height map data, you're actually painting down real mountains. So the only really sort of fake part is that those mountains are then getting textured by uh, the game engine in real time. So yeah, really nice, easy way to get good results. So yeah, I hope you guys find this product useful. I think it's a really great addition to the Brushify toolkit. Uh, there's always a need to create these sort of grassland environments or, you know, forest or alpine environments. All kinds of different ways that you can use, uh, you know, you could use these sort of really highly detailed photogrammetry cliffs. That's really the beauty of it is that these sort of assets can be used in so many different scenarios uh, as they're just so generic. So yeah, stay tuned for more Brushify updates and I'm going to be trying to get more assets out in the future. Thanks guys!